to you all of K-pop. If you do, welcome to this segment. The K-pop stars we love. The reason why K-pop is loved all around the world. And during this time, I, Sam Carter, and Sasa Ru will be closely examining and exploring K-pop through the musician's point of view. Oh my K-pop! That's right, listeners, it's Oh My K-Pop time! Boop, 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 boop. What's up, everyone? <laughs> That's the voice of Mr. Sol Samuel! Yes, 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 yes. What's up, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in. And by the way, I got a news to tell you. What's up, man? Last week, I went to this place established by your uh, one, of, uh, one of the people from your hometown. Uh-huh. Yeah? Yeah? Who who goes by the name of, of Gordon. Okay. Mr. Oh, okay. Mr. Ramsey. Oh, Mr. Ramsey. Yeah, yeah we're, good, we're good friends. So, yeah. I went to his place last weekend. Mm. Uh, Saturday, probably. Because he's got a restaurant it, in Korea. Yeah, it was yeah. the second day after he opened up his restaurant, like, officially on mm. Friday. But oh. before that... I didn't get to visit there, but when I went there, I was totally amazed because the interior was as if I was inside the scene of Hell's, Ki- Hell's Key thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, is it that concept? Yeah. Oh. It's under that concept, and the burgers they sell over there was pretty awesome. Wait, wait, where is this place? Uh, In Jamshil area. Oh, is it? That's yeah. close to me. I can go check it out. Yeah, then. yeah maybe you oh. should. But the lines are crazy, though. I went there like 7 in the evening, and yeah. it almost took me like an hour and a half to get inside no. there. Because there were about 75 teams ahead of me. Oh my but the good thing goodness. is that the place was huge, huge enough to like contain all those people. So is yeah. it is it the is it his mm. first restaurant in Korea? It is. Oh, that's so interesting. Not just in Korea. I heard that it's like the first one in the entire Asia or whatever. Right, because yeah. he is super popular. Yeah, he in is Korea. in Korea for swearing, shouting in yeah. the kitchen. He's even been on variety shows uh, in, in, in Korea. In Korea, um, I didn't know that. Dengjango to Putake. Oh, um, really? Yeah, the where. You look inside some people's refrigerators and you yeah. make food. And so he, did he cook for the panels or he, was he, he the one who's being served? He was doing a bit of everything. Okay. But <laughs> they had to bleep out <laughs> <laughs> almost every sentence he was saying. He's so good. I love him. Wow, oh, that's, that's nice. so cool. So you had a good time. Oh, and I even brought a pen from that place, uh, which is really cute. It says his name on it. Yay! Yeah. Did they give that to you or did you just take it? Uh, they gave it. I mean, okay, they pretty much gave this to everyone who visited the place. Aww. I guess it's just an opening thing. And uh, there was a guy, I think he is like a general manager who mm. Gordon sent personally. Mm. And that was that one was super good. Oh. Like he's so good at what he does, arranging all the customers and trying to like... Is make... a Korean guy? No, he wasn't. Oh. He's from the States, I believe. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Dude, it's so oh, clearly Samuel's had a good time. Very yeah, good time. I did, I did indeed. Apart from that, you've been good. Yeah, okay, week. Yeah, I think so. You? Yeah, I've been, I've been a I've been quite busy and stuff. And, what were you um, doing last Saturday? Last Saturday, while I was enjoying my burger. Saturday. Yeah, Saturday what, what, around uh, around uh, eight. Yeah, what was that eight Saturday. Oh, Saturday is my official. I decided this year yeah. every Saturday is my day off. Oh, really? I've decided now. Good for you. I'm getting older. <laughs> I'm getting older. So you're trying to balance out your life and work. Yeah. Right. One day, yeah. I'm going to just take off. And so yeah. Saturday, yeah. what did I do? Um, I went to... Um, you want to? I went to yep. Yongsan. Yongsan. You know, the electronics Yes, market. the electronic complex yeah. that sells a lot of electronic yeah. things. It's one of my favorite places. Okay, what did you get there? So I went there. What did I get? Yeah. I ended up not buying any electronics. Yeah. I went to a bookstore in the... That was random. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> I, I gave up and buying what I wanted to buy. I went yeah. to a bookstore and yeah. I bought like like 10 books. Okay, yeah. 10 books? Yeah. As a gift to others or no. for yourself? Do you read I'm, a lot of books? Yeah, usually? I'm very selfish. It was all for me. <laughs> Wait, so how many books do you read a year? A year? Yeah. I, I'm not not amazing. Like I do one book maybe every two weeks. What? But sometimes it's the same book again. So, yeah, but still, that's a lot. Right, I like, mean, especially nowadays, no one pretty much reads books. So. Do you know what I do? Right. Do you know? I love the smell of the book. Yeah. And I also I like I like having the physical thing because I'm scared on my phone or something. You're like, dis- I don't know. I don't know. It makes me nervous. I like having it with me. So I've got wow. a, I've got like I've got quite a lot of books. I didn't know you were such an analog guy. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. You know. I don't yeah. look like I read because I, I look yeah. pretty stupid. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but by the I'm way, you like, really look like Harry Tang Tang today. <laughs> <laughs> With those glasses on and your hairstyle being changed like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to say Harry Potter. Oh, really? You know, no, I, okay. <laughs> Harry Ding Ding. <laughs> oh, no. You're you know, it's just one of those habits you get from your job yeah. as a radio DJ. You cannot, you're not allowed to say the friend's name and stuff. Like, yeah, that's so dang. good. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. right, guys. Sam is with us. Oh, I'm already in a good mood. It's so nice. Everyone's saying hello. Amina says, hello again, Samuel, sir. Paulina, hello, Samuel, sir. Oh, what's um, up, everyone? Everyone's very happy to have you with us. But, mm -hmm. dude. I think we need to get started. Yeah, so what's going to happen is we're going to choose the K-pop star of the hour as usual, look back on their history from their debut till now, mm. and Samuel Carter and I will be analyzing the reason why we think they're loved through our point of view. Yep, uh, we also need the listeners' participation. Yes, in this yes, time. during the middle of the segment, Sam and I will be recommending some of the B-side tracks that we really like by the artist. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> and for today's K-pop star, uh, send in a song by them you want to hear. Mm -hmm. Tell us why um, you like them as well. Mm -hmm. Lastly, you can always send in your request for the K-pop star that you want us to closely listen to. We will actively reflect our opinions. And for some reason, I feel like a shrimp today. <laughs> Today's special <laughs> prize is a corn uh, video message from either me or Sam. <laughs> yeah, Samuel feels yeah. like a shrimp. Like it's so for random. some reason. I love it. Listeners. It is so random, but I feel like a shrimp who's been swimming under the big blue ocean really peacefully, but suddenly like getting in be engaged in the fight between two whales. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I'm crying. Well, whatever. So, Let's get going, bro. So, <laughs> so random. Hello, everyone. I feel like a shrimp. Yeah, I feel like a shrimp. And a very right. peaceful one. Who's really happy about his or her oh, life? Oh, dearie me. So, we're going to have two shrimps ding, ding, here. Ding, 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 ding. Exactly that. Do shrimps make a noise? I don't know. Anyways, oh, they do. Yeah. Do they? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. We need to do something today, which is talk about a K pop star of the day. Yes, today's K pop star is Bak Boram. Bak Boram. Yeah, Bak So, when she was on the audition program, Lee Seung Chul praised her for her deep sentiment and great vocal skills. Mm. Four years later, she made a big transformation and debuted in the spotlight. Yeah. So she has been growing as an artist who writes and composes her own songs. And let's talk about Pak Boram's music. Samuel, we'll take yeah. it away. I mean, it's such a, a good name to hear about again. You yeah. know, Pak Boram, kind of around the time that I was doing a lot of music in my group, she yeah. was really popular. So it's yeah. great to talk about her. Yeah. Um, she became known through Superstar K2 back in 2010. Yeah, that's right. And then there was a bit of a, a gap because mm. four years later, mm. she made her debut with Beautiful in 2014, which Ooh. was about girls who are so beautiful that it's even tiring. Ooh. And she showed a completely different image oh. from her. I wish I could feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> she showed a completely different image from her audition days and it was a really successful debut. Mm -hmm. And a bit more information. This uh, this year on January 6th, she released her new song for the romantic music drama called Soundtrack Number no. 1. And this was 20 months after her last song. And once again, she participated in writing the lyrics. And this is a ballad song which which has delicate and calm guitar sounds which leads on to the grand orchestra. The emotional melody and Pak Boram's vocal come together to pull the listener's heartstrings. Ah. Absolutely, absolutely. Speaking of Pak Boram, before we move on, there mm. was this little happening between me and her back in, back in the days. Like, I worked with her once I know. in the past. That was around like 2018 or 2017, I believe. Oh, so it's not like not really long ago. Yeah, so the thing, about, the, the thing about me and her was that we were working together, right? Obviously, mm. we were recording and we kind of got tired. So we went out for like to get something to eat. And the next day, the articles went like Pak Boram, So Samuel like they're dating and stuff uh -huh. and I was on all these different morning TV shows oh, wow. like with my pictures on for some reason all the uh, old ladies around where I lived recognized me that day and <laughs> that's probably the only day in my life that so many people recognized me in the street and they were like pointing at me look at that guy isn't he that dude with the tattoo on his neck and yeah. I was like what? That's not even true, yo. <laughs> so, one time you had dinner with Pak Boram and everyone thought you were dating. That's yeah, it wasn't even like a proper dinner thing, but we were just winning. We went out for like a friendly thing, like during the recording session and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the thing about her is that she's such a nice figure as a friend, like as to like 
to be like to keep someone who you want to keep in your friend zone you know what I mean yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that yeah. that's interesting mm. that must have been quite exciting as well though <laughs> no it was <laughs> No. I mean, I felt really sorry for her at that time her, because so she was such yeah. a, she was one of those really huge figures in yeah. the K- Korean music industry. And I felt like I was the reason behind like she being blamed for all those kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, like that's yeah. true. From her point of view, maybe it's not. Right. It's, yeah, I get it. Image right. wise and stuff. Mm-hmm. I get that. But um, it's interesting. How how is it working? Tell us about the kind of artist she is. I'm, uh, I'm curious. We'll get to there later. Are you going to talk about that yeah. more later? <laughs> right. Well, what we're going to do then, um, mm-hmm. because of course, mm-hmm. um, I feel like oh, I feel like she's been out of the game a long time. She has been. Yeah. How old is she? She's like 29, 30, something Probably like that. Probably something yeah. like that. Is she younger than you? She's around my age, but she's a bit younger. So I believe younger. she's around 29 or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh. um, for me, because she's such a great vocalist, it's yeah. so nice to think that she's come back mm-hmm. with, with music and a song. Right. And um, I think before we move on and stuff, maybe mm-hmm. we should listen to that latest song. Okay, let's have a listen to 행복해지고 싶어 Want to be happy song by Park Boram. Ah, oh, that was it. Yeah, this is that was a hangbook. Kaji go shippo. Want to be happy? Song by Park Bo Ram. And how did you like her song? During oh. the song, you mentioned that her voice sounds really sad in some way. I'll just say, why oh. is her voice so sad? Like, know, right? th- like just every single word, mm-hmm. it feels like she's putting like a lot of emotions to yeah. it. While she, during the process of recording, I believe. I think artists like this. Mm. The reason they're able to sing like that is probably because mm. they've been through some stuff in their life. Right, you can't fake this kind of emotion. You can't fake yeah. that. You can't fake that. Yeah. That's you know, um, right. she is such a brilliant vocalist, and she's mm-hmm. done lots of different styles. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's you know, I think going into ballads mm-hmm. is probably quite a natural step for her. Right, and uh, she does it so well. Right, yeah. that's true. Oh, by the way, this is this mm. is kind of random. I really like her clothes today. Thanks, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's on my clothes store, beginning with Z. Right. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Good for you. <laughs> right, guys, what yeah. we're gonna do is move on to mm-hmm. listen to um, some, some of the hit songs from by Park Bo Ram. Right? Yeah, yeah, hit songs. One of some of her popular songs. So we'll listen to mm. them and maybe talk about it. And I can't wait to, wait to get to the first song that we're gonna listen to because this first song that we're gonna listen to is a massive hit from her it is let's get going Mm -hmm. (sighs) yes brings me so much so much memories from the past this song is called beautiful featuring Zico and this was her debut single which was released on 2014 August 7th that's when I was 24, by the way. Wow. It is a medium tempo song with a hip hop rhythm. The melody is easy to sing along to, and it has a retro piano sound. It is based on our real story, and Rado and new lyricist team Pongwa Chedi wrote about her diet plan and Park Boram's story of wanting to become beautiful. And the witty lyrics represent how many girls feel. Do you know what? Yeah. I think that was the main point of this song because right. there were so many articles about how suddenly she'd become more. Pretty. Be- beautiful and pretty. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, she won it in the first place, actually. Yeah. Because remember, when she was still on the audition program, she was known for, like, being a really good vocalist. I mean, that was an undeniable fact. But a lot of people were arguing about how she looked in the past. Like, I don't fully consent yeah. on, like, judging other people's appearance nowadays. But the yeah. thing about her back in the days, there was it was, con- like, controversial. So she decided to lose her weight, be in more shape, and try to like mm, make her sum up more, I'd say. And yeah. it was the whole concept of her yeah. debut album being mm-hmm. almost like looking like a celebrity, right. as well as sounding like one too. And she pulled that off perfectly with this yeah. song. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then getting someone like Zico involved. This right. is when he was obviously big, mm-hmm. but he's not the Zico that we know now. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, so he was on his way to becoming a superstar, and I think this song helped both of them really rise up and become uh, top, top artists. Well, he's more like a representative figure in K-pop industry nowadays, Zico, I mean. Yeah. But back in the days, like, compared to back in the days, he's not as, like, well-sailed as right, right, right. how he was back in the days. Yeah. Because this time of his 
his musical、um, career, if he featured on certain track, that means the track is gonna blow up real yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this happened to be one of the songs, so. Absolutely.、Yeah. I, mean, I think it's definitely her biggest song, isn't it?、Right. Why don't we listen to a bit more featuring、mm-hmm. Zico? Yeah, but you're there, beautiful. Enjoy. Oh, by the way, one more additional information from our listener, Leon Tio said she won Artist of the Year for August at Kaon Chart K pop Music Award with this debut song. He meant by Yep Bo Jota、yeah. featuring Zico. Thank she, you so much for the info. Yeah, she killed it that year.、Mm-hmm. Mm. And the next song we're listening to is called h e w a Dong Hogun Sang Mun Dong. Do you know this song? Yeah, of course, okay. man. Okay, anyways, this song is from Reply 1988, Ungdapara i l g u p a r p a original soundtrack part 4, which was released on November 28, 2015, and Pak Boram reinterpreted t o n g m u r o n s original song with her pure vocals.、Mm. To reenact the sentimental vibe of the original song, instruments from the 80s and 90s were used melodia and guitar, ukulele and castanets, triangle, xylophone, etc. It was included in the sixth episode where Chetek、uh, Pakbogom wins a go contest in China and comes back to Sangmundong to eat pizza with his friends and hugs Tokson, Hedi, and that is why the song received attention even before its release. It was involved in such an important scene in the drama,、right. I think. Did you、um, watch the drama?、Um, I didn't watch the whole、mm. thing, I, admittedly, mm-hmm. but yeah. I did actually、um, watch a few like, highlights key scenes, moments right,、yeah. and stuff.、Mm-hmm. And because、um, listening to this song,、mm-hmm. I don't know, for me, it just.、Mm-hmm. It, Because obviously it's a remake song, isn't it?、Mm-hmm. A remake song of Tom Muron's、mm-hmm. original song.、Mm-hmm. When I hear this kind of remake song, I love the fact that they keep the. Almost the original vibe of、mm-hmm. it and the soul,、mm-hmm. especially with the, the instruments that、mm-hmm. they use during this time. Right. I don't know, it just makes you feel so. Nostalgic, I say. Nostalgic、yeah. is、mm-hmm. the right word. And I think this song, Hewa Dong or Sang Mun Dong, whatever you call it, is actually a really good example of promoting a song.、Mm-hmm. Because nowadays, a lot of songs are being promoted through dramas. Yeah. Especially. And this is like the first generation drama promoted songs ever. And、mm-hmm. us Koreans, I don't know why, but we somehow like feel more attached to a song if it's、um, associated with、yeah. certain t y p e of visual or medias or whatever. And if the media is huge enough, that means the song's. Most likely gonna blow up as well, and、yeah. this song happens to be one of them. It was、yeah. it was huge, and,、yeah. and speaking about how she sung it as well,、yeah. so pure and simple. Yeah, it's very pure. It's so pure, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's just like, like shrimp. She is, it's,、yeah. it's like it's pure as shrimp, and it's not, <laughs> she doesn't make it complicated, but I think、mm. this kind of song can、mm. be more difficult to sing. Wow. But if you listen to her sing it,、mm-hmm. there's no like vibration,、right. bending, it's just really simple.、Mm. And you, you feel the lyrics more, don't you?、Mm-hmm. Um, oh, let's do a bit of reminiscing, shall we? Okay, let's enjoy. Wow, I don't want to introduce this song. <laughs> Can、right. you do this for me? Yeah, this is called <laughs> Non Where Why You, featuring <laughs> the guy on my left here. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Where, where, what's this song from? So, this、yeah. is the title、yeah. track from a mini album, Orange、yeah. Moon, released、yeah. in July 2017.、Mm-hmm. It's all about this relatable situation where、mm. one thinks about someone late at night.、Yes. Mm-hmm. The lyrics expressed honest emotions.、Yeah. A hip hop urban song with quiet piano sounds,、mm-hmm. vintage as well.、Mm-hmm. And it says here it's Ha San Well who won the best RB and soul album at the Crit Music Awards featured in this song. To add to the quality, tell us about it, man. How was it? Okay, first off, not just this time, but I won second time in、yeah. 19, 2020 or 2021. I forgot these. Yeah, baby. But, anyways, the thing about this song is that. Uh, when I went t h e i r studio to record this song, I was pretty confused at the first time because the guy, after I finished recording my verse, of course, it was somewhere between like singing and rapping, like in between somewhere、yeah. that it was, so it wasn't that hard. But 
this composer dude, I forgot his name, but he's all of a sudden try ask me to sing the ad lib, like the most balladish ad lib ever. Uh... And of course, there's no way I can pull that off, right? Because I'm not the one who's really used to doing those kind of stuff. But nowadays, yeah. come to think about it, if I ever tried even like a bit harder, if if I tried, then would it made the song a lot more like better sounding? Mm. So that's the one point that I kind of regret on mm. being a little shy when I had to sing that the kind of thing. So, and I was going through the reaction of this song, right? And a lot of people thought Chong Hyung Don was featuring on this song for some <laughs> reason. <laughs> they got confused my voice over Chong Hyung Don Nim's voice. Why is that? Okay. Okay, here's the for your information, Chong Hyung Don himself runs a group called Chong Hyung Don Gua. What was it? Twitter? <laughs> I forgot. What was it? I can't remember. Ah, Hyungdon and Daejun. Yeah, yeah. Hyungdon and Daejun. Hyungdon and Daejun. And the thing about him, whenever he sings or rap, he usually sounds like <laughs> me. Like we don't sound the same, people. Please oh, hear no. me out. That's, okay. That is so good. Like if it was just one person who came up with that kind of reaction, I would have been like. Okay, okay, that's your opinion, but I don't agree, but there were more that. Okay, this is my part. <laughs> this does not sound like that. <laughs> no. I know, right? What's the resemblance between me and Jong Young Dong <laughs> on this verse? Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I well, love that. Well, anyways, like during the process, Park Boram has been really nice to me. She was being really professional. And I respect her for doing her job so well in terms of singing, producing, writing lyrics, mm. taking part in composition and stuff. And even after the song was released, she has been like one of the most friendliest figures in my life so far. So That's I cool. respect her no matter what others say. To That's her. brilliant. Yeah. So this one is called Nonware. Why are you featuring it? Yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> right. So we spoke for the whole song there pretty much. <laughs> but we had to because obviously yeah. um, having Samuel on that is mm. adds a different perspective, doesn't it? Right. Uh, we're talking Pak Boram today. That's right. Mm. So send in a song by her that you want to hear and also tell us about the reason why I became her fan if you guys are a fan. Yeah, man. Um, do you yeah. know what I liked especially? Like, yeah. um, especially with Nonware, Why You? I yeah. think it shows she can also do a different style of genre. True, true, true. Because that's definitely more sort of... I don't like the word urban, but yeah, it's, it's more, more of an urban-ish type of song right? yeah. compared to what she was doing in the past. I think that shows just how versatile she is too. So it's incredible to see the right. different styles of songs uh, that we could play there for right. you. But you know, when I when I think that she really shines is that she's when she sings ballad stuff over yeah. this kind of stuff. I, I, mm -hmm. Everyone has their strengths, yeah. and because she's got that emotive side to her voice, yeah. the ballads are incredible. So, as is, as my recommendation of B side tracks from her today, I brought somewhat ballad ish song oh, okay. from her album, which is um from the same album actually. The album is called Orange Moon, released back in 2017, July mm. 13th, and the title song was the track that we just listened to, the yeah. only way featuring myself. And this one is that track number two uh -huh. called Moon. Uh -huh. Oh, by the way, the album is uh, comprised of five different songs. All songs are amazing. So those of you who hasn't listened, haven't listened to this album, then make sure to listen to the entire album after our show is over. And moving back to this song, Moonwalk, I was moved by the lyrics of this song mm. that goes 조심스레 문을 열고 carefully opening the door 어두운 길을 나선다 walking in the yeah. dark 이어폰엔 드럼 소리 쿵쿵쿵쿵 drum goes boom boom in my earphones <laughs> the translation was somewhat weird but yeah. 내 가슴도 괜히 설레 it makes my heart feel somewhat uh, excited how do you say excited? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 설레 but in a more romantic way yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The thing about this part's lyric is that it reminds me of the first time I got like a love letter like kind of letter from I wouldn't call it a first love because mm. what you know about love at the age of 10 or 11, right? Mm. So it was uh, during the winter time. It snowed a lot. I got this letter from <sighs> the person I was fond of. Uh. Yeah, I this song's lyric really brought back all those beautiful memories right. from my youth. So I Bit wanted to share mm. how I felt that moment. And I would like to tell our listeners that you should relate this song with your own memories from the past. 
More of an innocent yeah. love. Maybe. Right, more of an innocent love. I like that. Yes. I like that. I like that. <laughs> um, dude, it's a great choice then, mm. I think, to, um, because, you know, focusing on the lyric side of things is mm. also a really important part of music. Mm. Um, all right, well, I think maybe we should go ahead and have a listen. Oh, by the way, mm. before we listen to this song, this is not like a 100% ballad song, but I said the word ballad-ish because it's somewhere between the urban R&B kind of stuff right, right, and right. ballad stuff. So mm. I hope a lot of guys, a lot of you will enjoy this. So. Okay. Yeah. Introduce it, man. Okay, this is Moonwalk, sung by Buck Brown. <laughs> This song definitely contains a vibe of happiness throughout the song, right? I hope everyone got to like relate their own memories with this song. So. I love what about that. you, though? I obviously yeah? vocally fantastic. I yeah? love that this this mm. line. Mm -hmm. um, that I don't even know what I think it's some sort of sampling. Yeah, kind of remind me of like mm -hmm. being on the moon or something. Mm -hmm. Great. Really eerie. I like it though, man. And what I really liked about this song was that she or he, the composer guy, I forgot the name of this composer mm. guy, but he didn't really try to show off any skills throughout the song. Mm. You know what I mean, instrument yeah, wise right. and vocal wise too, she didn't really try to show off how good of a vocal she is. Right. Yeah. I think she... Uh, well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to talk about that mm -hmm. too. Because okay. um, she's not one of those showy-offy right. vocalists. <laughs> no. That, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Um, fantastic. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, great choice from Samuel there. His mm -hmm. B-side chat was Moonwalk mm -hmm. by Puck Bordan. Right. By the way, Miss Bradica says here on YouTube, time spent here is so refreshing. Oh. Nice chat room. Great MCs. Great vibes. Yes, 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 yes. Welcome to the show. You're listening to Super K-pop hosted by Samuel. Carter yeah. every day four to six. I know. Is it, oh yeah, it's four to six. Yeah, four to six. <laughs> you forgot your own time. <laughs> you're right. You're right. By the way, uh, Leon says. Um, yeah. Okay, so you know we spoke about her losing weight. She oh. lost apparently thirty-two kilograms. Uh, that's about the amount that I lost. Did you lose that? Did you? I mean, I would. I used to be like ninety-one kilo oh, way wow. back, so and you... the lowest I went was fifty-nine kilos. So oh. I went about. Oh yeah, that's about that's yeah. forty. That's yeah. crazy, man. About forty, yeah. That's crazy. That mm. I, that's like, that's like, a little person. <laughs> <laughs> you just, it's almost like you lose your half of you. Right? That's crazy, yeah. man. My goodness me. You'll never understand as a person who's been skinny throughout your I, life, right? I've always been, or well, not obviously when I was a baby. Yeah. I was very light, but uh -huh. I've always been since sixty and seventy. Uh -huh. I'd have never been outside that wow. zone. I'm really envious about those never. kind of people. Yeah. I don't know. I want to be 75. And anyway, we'll take a look at that. Okay, let's okay. go. We'll move on. We'll move on. Yeah. Uh, so many people writing in about Pak Boram yes, today. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Shall we read out some... Uh, some mess messages. Okay. Yeah. This is from Indonesia says, Oh my K-pop. Hola, hola. Sam C. Samuel so. Happy Tuesday. Pak Boram. I like her voice. Don't know much about her songs anyway. Except some from drama OSTs. Mm. Uh, that's why I'm looking forward to listen to her songs more today from you guys. Mm. The one that I remember the most is from Reply 1988. Hewa mm. Dong or Sangmun Dong. Yeah. Makes me remember Hewa Station though. This one also nice. Please say something, even though it is a lie from W's OST. Love that drama too. Like a dream from Prison Playbook. Leftover Left Hand from Touch Your Heart. And Forever Always from 49 Days. I like Moonwalk, Yesterday, and Imaginary Day too. May I request Beautiful Pak Boram featuring Zico to be played today? Thank you. By the way, we played your song request. We did, man. Yeah. We did. Mm -hmm. um, fantastic. She also mentioned Moonwalk as well yeah true that's cool man so seems like I brought a perfect song today absolutely yeah. um, she's actually she's quite um, well known for doing lots of OSTs actually right. she's done a lot of them Win Some Good Tea is another song mm. that she's done um, Jin Shimi Data mm -hmm. what's that in English I don't know what the English mm -hmm. title for that um, drama is but songs like that mm -hmm. she, people do look for her a lot I mm -hmm. think it's because she's got that really sad voice right. <laughs> that we were talking about. Incredibly sad. Right. Um, we've also got Leon Taylor writing into us as well. Mm. Um, from Singapore. 
Right. Um, today's artist. I'm sad to say, I don't know much about her. Mm-hmm. I do know some of her songs. My favourite's got to be Ordinary Love. Mm. Uh, she collaborated with um, uh, Pak Young and then Hewa Dong, which is the OST of Reply 1998. Mm. Also sang many other OSTs for popular dramas like W, Prison Playbook, and once again, to name a few. Yep, she, she's very popular for OSTs. Mm-hmm. And then last but not least, Samuel Sa, of course, should know Pak Burang well. He's the featured artist on the title track mm, Why yes. You of her second mini album yes, yes. Orange Moon mm, yes. uh, really love this track too uh, we spoke about it but he does say what was it like mm-hmm. uh, working on this track with Pak Bodam as well mm-hmm. uh, brilliantly on tower thank you very much mm-hmm. indeed so was she in the studio whilst you were recording your part as well uh, yes she was and I was nervous wow. because she was listening to it and back then I wasn't really used to and I wasn't really confident person how I compared to how I am nowadays yeah. so every time I go to studio I started shaking for some reason Reason. and yeah. especially when I'm in the vocal booth you know oh, that everyone course. else is in a control room and they'd be saying something about your performances right yeah, 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 yeah. so I was always aware about them saying bad things about my thing and I couldn't really focus on the work but I tried to do my best yeah. it is quite nerve wracking because yeah. you go into the vocal booth yeah. and you're singing and mm. you know that they're listening to your voice right. at a high volume right. everyone in the room's listening and oh. Almost judging. Right. Because they're trying to say, can we use this or not? Right. That sort of thing. It is quite nerve wracking. Every think. single one who happens to be in the control room happens to have the same facial expression on their faces. Oh, yeah. Like saying, it it, it almost says like, quote, let's see what you got. Yeah, unquote yeah, kind yeah. of thing, right? <laughs> Which is why yeah. when I when I direct loads, um, guys nowadays, oh. I always make it a really bright positive yeah, that's the key of like finishing the recording in a really good quality right yeah, yeah. Uh, my always, my yeah. first line always yeah. is i press it and i go oh, it's really good uh. <laughs> whatever they do and then we go from there you by know. the way the last time i did that to a certain group i got fired uh. <laughs> <laughs> they hated me for the result because that group ended up sounding just like me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, at least Pak Boram didn't make you sound like oh, right, Pak Boram. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's probably impossible as no. well. That's probably impossible. Uh, fantastic. So yeah. we are talking Pak Boram mm-hmm. today, and um, Samuel chose a great B-side yeah. track. Um, I'm also going to play a song. Mm-hmm. What, what did you bring? So what I'm going to do, oh, I decided, do you know what? I, I think for a lot of my picks, oh. I, I tend to go always for their early work, mm-hmm. like either their first album or, oh. or something like that. I've actually gone again oh. to her first mini album okay. called Celebrity. Celebrity. I remember when this came out, 2015, mm-hmm. and I was thinking, oh, I caught the the whole concept, because mm-hmm. we spoke about it. The mm-hmm. title for this is Yone uh, Halle. Uh, okay. And she was talking about, and it's got Yepojota on the track as wow, well. Wow, I didn't know Yepojota wasn't the title song. I yeah. mean, it was a single, obviously, it beforehand, was, yeah. but I thought they might have like put that song as a title song but the title song is actually Yone Halle, Yone Halle. Song, yeah. I want to date or have mm-hmm. a relationship um, and so I realized this whole album was mm. the concept was kind of similar with her mm. wanting to become more beautiful and mm-hmm. stuff and it was quite a big issue I remember mm. I honestly remember at the time mm-hmm. how uh, she changed um, visually visually yeah. appearance yeah. rise and looking like a celebrity I remember, even mm. remember the album cover it's like a magazine right where she looks like she's on the mm-hmm. cover of it um so i decided to go for a song called before after mm. um the reason i wanted to go for this one is to go for a song which is not as popular mm. right but it all kind of covers the same topic and it's like um an interesting conversation mm. uh, with somebody and like you said before mm-hmm. i love the fact that she's not um too extravagant mm-hmm. with the way she sings oh, like wow it's really kind of it's really kind of simple but mm. for me that's like better because it kind of gets up, gets across the lyrical message mm-hmm. and you know when a singer over sings something right. sometimes it can be a bit uncomfortable mm-hmm. to listen to mm-hmm. um and um i i love the fact that vocally and for this whole album in particular she did a lot of that mm-hmm. and um you know she speaks a lot about uh, wanting to receive love and um, she even talks about worries about dieting mm-hmm. like all these lyrics mm-hmm. it's not it's a song 
that only she should sing. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Right. Because of the lyrical content. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's why I chose it. It's very kind of bright and upbeat, and I thought you guys might enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Um, I think we get, we'll get it on first and maybe talk about it more. Um, this is my B-side track. It's from her celebrity mm -hmm. album from 2015. Let's get right to it. Before or after. <laughs> Some were actually confused if this song was a song called Celebrity by IU, but no, this was a song no. from Park Boram, and the name yeah. of the song was uh, Before After. Yes. Her album was called Celeb Pretty. Pretty. Yeah, very clever, very clever. Uh, right, that brings us. Oh, it's the end of the show. Already? Yeah, man. We spoke um, endlessly about Pak Bottom today. That was uh, fun. Uh, let's just do this all night. I yeah. could do this all day. Uh, me too, me too. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, we've got to end the show. Uh, today we spoke back, Brown. Yeah, so who are we going to talk about next week? Next week we'll talk about my good friend. Yeah. Mr. Nam Eric. Oh, Mr. Nam. <laughs> Eric Nam. Eric Nam, we're talking about. He's a good friend of you, right? Yeah, well, I know okay. Eric quite well. It's going to be fun talking about him. Okay. We'll destroy him next week then. Yeah, yeah. Um, Simon, thank you for coming. Thank you so much for inviting me. We'll see Samuel next week, everyone. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, no, yeah. you will. We yeah. will. <laughs> Come soon to us yeah. next week. And we'll say goodbye for now. Bye bye. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. If you're interested in more information about the show Super K-Pop, make sure you go to the official homepage, that is www.adidangradio.com, and check out the Super K-Pop page.